when something happens, it's always one of the options of what possibly could have happened. And now we come to the, you will say, <laughs> obvious. No, no, no. Quantum physics theory is that it's not that we have multiple possibilities and then one thing happens and you say goodbye to other possibilities. To understand what happens, you have to understand what didn't happen. Because it is as if at the quantum level all possible options happen. To repeat another old joke here, which I love, I used it already 25 times. A guy enters a cafeteria and said, can I get coffee, but just without cream, just coffee. And you probably know what the waiter answers. Sorry, we have no cream, we only have milk. So since we don't have cream, I cannot give you coffee without cream. I just can give you coffee without milk, because we have milk, no? And you, it's only meaningful to say without cream if there is an option that you have cream. Here, I think that this approach where negativity counts can be uh, applied also or this actuality of possibilities, like to understand why, how something happened, implies also understanding what didn't happen but could have, uh, but could have happened. And this is what I mean by how I apply to history the quantum notion of retroactivity. A thing is open and then retroactively it becomes this or that. My favorite example, which I'm sorry I mention all the time, is Shakespeare's Hamlet. Read it as a plain text and you will see an incredible amount of simple contradictions, stupidities and so on. And in my radical reading, the idea is that Hamlet is really the bad guy of the play. Not only from a feminist standpoint, just read it closely. It is wrong to ask, but what did Shakespeare really mean? The point is not this usual psychological one who knows we cannot penetrate his mind. No, probably he himself didn't know what he really meant.